How's everybody doing? And welcome to the fish room. Um, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. Here are the tanks that I have up and running. Some of them are already drained. Um, but basically, if you wanna set up a fish room, I'm gonna walk you through, cause I'm moving everything, so I'm basically restarting. Um, granted, I have cycled sponge filters and fish, um, but what I'm doing is I'm draining almost all the water out of these tanks, and I'm moving them, and I'm kind of starting over. So if you're looking to set up a fish room, this is gonna be a good way to watch a step-by-step -step guide. Uh, if you watch my most recent video, I unpacked all this PVC and piping here. This is what I'm doing right now in the Gemco pump I have up there. Um, so right now what I'm doing, I just wanted to show you while I was in the process of doing it, I stopped, I'm like, I'm gonna record this because it's kind of a good thing to see. Um, I have my pump here. It's gonna have a pipe that goes straight up. It's gonna tee off, go on this wall, all the way down here to the corner, then over here and above these tanks here. Um, so what I'm doing is all the fittings that I showed before. Um, this comes with the pump. It's a little elbow, um, two foot of piping, and then I bought this T-valve. And then these clamps I bought, and then 17 foot of hose, I'm cutting that up now. And then these are the pre-made um, PVC with taps for airlines. And they come with these little wall mounts. Um, all you do is you wrap it around and clip it on. Um, I'm having the part that you screw to the wall, the top part going to be above it. And these are going to aim downward, not out. Um, so from the wall, here's the wall here, they're going to be aiming downward. So it's going to be a straight line to the tank. Um, but I'm just cutting these to size. I'm going to show you how I'm connecting these. Um, just a couple steps along the way, but how you set up a fish room pretty much from scratch. I have a couple things that are going to be speeded up once it's set up. Um, if you're starting from scratch, this is exactly what you're going to do. This isn't mandatory, but what I did above the wall here, uh, where the tanks are going to be about here, so this will be above them. I put just a uh, painter's tape where the tanks are going to separate. Um, so right there is the end of a 55. Here I'm going to have my 10s. This will be a 55. This will be a 55. I have a piece of tape right over here on the mirror. Hard to see right there by the plants. And then there's going to be a 29. And then my 20 gallon tank is right here. Um, so that's where it separates. So I have everything set up on the floor to start with. Uh, right there, I want to have my 8 valve so it can connect to the 20 gallon and then the 29s. And then going straight over, I have my 55. So this is going to connect on the right side of that and then also the left side of this 55 here and then coming down from the tens uh, that's going to be right in the middle of the 10 gallons there's going to be two 10 by 10 gallons side by side and stacked so that's just going to give me a rough idea you can measure this all out and you're going to set it up on the floor because uh, it'll be very hard to mount these and then make your measurements and connect those but you're pushing it together by hand um, so doing it on the floor is a lot easier so i'm going to set this whole thing up on the floor and then I'm going to go ahead and lift it up as in one piece and I'm going to mount it um, right along the top of this roof here. Um, so right now I'm making this cut. I just measured it. It's 39 inches. Um, so I already have this little connection here. It's going to go over and make an elbow. So I'm going to show you how I connect these. It's pretty simple but I thought I may as well show it. And then from there I'm going to show you me just draining the tanks. I'm going to kind of skip through that, moving the tanks, and then we'll move forward from there. But I want to show you how I'm making these connections. All right, so I just made my cut here. This is 39 inches. Um, to put these together, it's pretty simple, but you wanna make sure you have your black clamps here. You use this first. So you gotta slide that on. Um, otherwise, if you push it together, you're kinda of trapped. And not a big deal, but I like to make this warping, how it's kind of, it's, it's, it was in a spool. I wanna make that um, the highest part to the ceiling because over time, gravity's gonna make it sag and kinda of level out. Um, that way you don't have a sag uh, initially. Um, but right here, it's probably hard to see. It's not a real big deal. But basically, you just wanna push this on all the way to the end. Um, this being my top and this is my bottom. So my arc is gonna go this direction and not sagging. Uh, push it on as far as you can. And then you're gonna take this little clamp here. On There's a little ridge, it's like a little triangle. Um, and then there's a break. You wanna go right past the break and then make your connection here and just push it together as far as you can by hand. And you're pretty much good to go. Um, and I just realized I missed most of that camera shot, but um, you can at least hear what I was saying. Um, but that is your connection. This is, I just hand tighten as tight as I can. You can use a wrench and do another, another few turns. Um, then you're gonna have your black clamp already on the hose, connect it on and just tighten it up. And then these are all gonna screw 
to the wall there and that's pretty much going to finish our air um, you can check out the video like i said before this um, for all these parts but i figured i'd show you this while i'm doing it um, next thing we'll be doing is just moving the tanks over all right so i have all my fittings together now so i'm going to go from the corner first and just screw these all on the wall um, if you already have these put together on the floor i recommend going in the corner um, i haven't done that yet um, but basically the corner is the corner it's not going to change an inch or two um, my pump can move an inch or two left or right so i'm going to go from the corner over with my elbow piece screws on the wall and just work my way down Okay, so here's what the pump looks all set up. Um, you can see the, I have eight valves there, the T, another 12, and then I did use a couple of nails to help uh, with the slack. Uh, it goes over another eight, our elbow, and then our final eight. Uh, so all in all, I think I have uh, 36 outlets um, all running off of this pump. It can do 20 to 30. I'm probably gonna use around 23, maybe 26 outlets. Uh, having some spares for tumblers, things like that. Uh, even just running an air down to a bucket. Say you have some fish I want to ship or just keep in a bucket for a day uh, for a sale, I can put them in there. I uh, run an extra airline tube down. Uh, all I need to do now is set up my air tube. I have 500 feet of it on this roll right there. That was 25 bucks. Um, so now all I need to do is move my tanks, plug in all my air and drop them down. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Um, even this corner, and I started in the corner, um, if I had a second pair of hands, it would be a lot easier to make that perfect. Um, there's a little bit too much slack where I can't lift it up and nail it. So if I had an extra pair of hands when I was doing that, it would have been nicer. Um, I can always disconnect it there, cut an inch off and reconnect it. Um, I'll probably do that before the tanks are up, but it's in the corner. You don't really notice it when you're looking at the whole wall. Um, but just little things to look for. This is kind of the whole air setup right there. Um, but now we're going to go ahead and start moving tanks over. I'm going to record as much as I can and kind of uh, cut through it so it's not too long of a process. Um, but I think I might name this video setting up a fish room in a day. Um, obviously it's not taking me a day, but if I had all my supplies ready, like if you're watching this video, you want to set up a fish room and you buy all the supplies, have them sitting at your house ready to go after they've already came in. Um, with uh, another person's help, even by yourself, you could probably do this whole fish room setup, at least the hardware of it in a day. Um, especially once you have all the right parts and you know you don't have to go buy anything else or measure things. Uh, once you do all the measuring, you buy everything. And I'll probably do another video on this step-by-step -step, all in one video. But basically all you need for your fish tanks is your tanks, these stands which you can build in two minutes, a bunch of sponge filters, your air tubing there, an actual air pump itself with all the tubing and PVCs. Uh, in this room, I'm running a heater, so that heats the entire room. If you're going to do a fish room setup, uh, you can also just buy heaters for each tank, but you're going to have a lot of plugs. Um, so this whole fish room is going to be run off of one plug, two plugs, the heater, and the air pump. I'm going to have some lights and some extra things, but the actual necessities of filtered water and heated tanks, it's all going to be off of one and two plugs, which I think is awesome. Um, for this air pump, there is going to be... A connection there I have a plug I have that comes down with a little bit of extra length because the cord barely makes it so this is gonna lay flat against the wall um, that's gonna allow me to get tanks closer to the outlet and not have to lose like three inches of a cord sticking off the wall and it's gonna allow me a drip loop so if water ever gets on that cord it comes down it's gonna sit there instead of coming to the outlet um, so let's keep moving forward setting up the fish room moving tanks Alright guys, so I got these, this tank's already drained, I got the uh, bottom 29 tank drained to about an uh, inch and a half, two inches of water. Just make sure none of your fish are stuck in any uh, little nooks and crannies where there's little puddles in the tank. Um, but everything looks good now, especially have a lot of plecos, I don't want them sitting in little caves where there's uh, no water, so make sure that's good. Um, don't really recommend doing this, but we're going to try with the smaller tanks first. And the top tank's completely empty, this one's got about an inch of water. But I'm going to try to just slide all these stands, so... Um, hopefully it works well because I'm already getting started, but this shouldn't be too bad. I can slide it a little bit um, whenever there was water in it. So um, I'm on a flat concrete floor, so it shouldn't be too bad. 
don't really recommend this, but I'm not too worried about this tank. Uh, the 55s I'm going to be a little bit more concerned with, but um, we'll see how it goes. I think we'll be fine. And obviously, if you are uh, setting a tank up for the first time doing a fish room, you don't have to even worry about this process. But uh, all the weight is in the four corners, so long as they're even and they're all touching corners, there's not really a concern for any breakage. Uh, just go slow, guys, and don't let the water rock. Alright, there we go. We got first tank in place, and this 55 gallon tank is almost drained. I'm going to show you how I'm doing that. So basically, I just have a mag drive there. I've shown this before with a sponge over it. Uh, it's pumping water out to my floor drain, and then whenever the tank gets real low, I'm going to lift it up, plop in the next tank. That's how I do my water changes, and that's how we're going to drain the tanks today. Do a little bit of time lapse there, you can see how fast these tanks really drain. This is only going to take me a few minutes to drain a 55 gallon tank. Um, but go ahead and watch my other video that I showed um, on prepping your fish to move them. Um, whenever you're moving your fish, if you're moving a fish tank, you don't, want to, you don't want to clean the filters at all. You don't want to do a gravel back or clean all your yarns. Uh, leave as much of the dirty um, surfaces in the tank and drain as much water as possible. Um, that way you're going to leave a lot of nitrates and fish waste and beneficial bacteria in the filter in these other surface areas in the tank. Uh, that way when you fill it up with all that fresh water, it's not going to be, it's going to be a big water change. It's a lot of clean water, uh, but it's still going through a, hopefully kind of like a dirty filter or a really clean tank that they're going to stay in a clean tank, if that makes sense. Uh, I did a video on how to prep moving your fish. Um, if you guys can go back, it's like four or five videos old. You can check it out. Uh, but basically think about whenever you're doing a water change, um, doing a dip strip, where are your nitrates at, where's your pH at, are they going to experience a big shock. Um, if your tank's already clean and you do a big water change, it's still going to be clean, so it's not going to change a whole lot for those guys. If you guys want to see a video on this, this is six months old. I'm just growing mint. It's a little aquaponics. Pretty cool video and really good results. I didn't know how it was going to work out. Um, but this kind of moment of truth, I'm going to go ahead and slide these 255 gallons over here. Uh, obviously taking the top weight off. I don't have gravel in the tanks. There's only about an inch of water, so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, but let's go ahead and slide these guys over and see how it goes. Just got to go real slow. The initial first motion is the hardest. And make sure you have all your air tubes unplugged. But it's going to save me hours of time catching fish and putting them in the buckets and things like that. And I think it's going to be fine. Definitely couldn't do this on a carpet before the and we gotta move our filter on this thing. Just checking my corners as I'm sliding this, nothing's really moved. And I think it's just holding the weight pretty well, so. I was a little worried about doing this, but honestly, this is a lot easier than I thought it would be, so, so far, so good. If 
Now the big thing is, I wonder if I'm going to fit everything on this wall, because I have like a half inch where it's very close if they're even going to fit. I might be losing my last two 10 gallon tanks if it doesn't fit. All right, I think it's going to work out guys, but I'm going to keep moving these tanks and let's check it out when they're all set up and then I'm going to start filling them up. Alright guys, I have almost all the tanks in place. I have one more to go and honestly it's going to be within a half an inch and I'm fighting with the, the top angle of that cabinet. Um, I'm moving the last tank out over, really happy so far. Uh, filling these tanks up slow, dechlorinating, making sure I have the temperature matched. Another thing with these wrought iron stands, if you guys are looking to do these stands, um, I really do like them. Whenever I put them side by side, I'll pull them together and I'll zip tie them. That's going to help this whole thing be one large stand structurally uh, at least a little bit's gonna help with the wiggles and it's gonna look a lot nicer uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie those together uh, before the tanks are all full of water um, just kind of helps them all stay together in uh, more vertical so not swaying left and right um, but so far really liking the look of this I even angled my shop light uh, it's supposed to be like a triangle at the top I unhinged those so it's facing this wall I really like it it's gonna I think work well on just seeing the fish and then I can do individual lights above for uh, growing plants and stuff. But um, so far, so good. Moving all the tanks tonight. It is 12.17. I worked a 10-hour day, 10 and a half hours. And it's time to get stuff done in the fish room. So uh, hopefully you guys appreciate me doing this video. I had a long day, but uh, if you like it so far, go below. Make sure you like it. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Uh, but let's go ahead. Keep moving forward. We're going to fill these tanks up and get that last one in place. I really hope it fits. <laughs> Check it out guys, I am loving the setup right now. Uh, I'm not done yet, I'm still filling tanks up, I'm only on the second tank. I'm going to fill all the bottoms up first, then the tops, um, but just look at it. I mean, I'm really enjoying this so far, looking really nice. Hopefully the fish do well with uh, these huge water changes. Um, to be honest, I'm expecting a little bit of casualties, hopefully none. Um, but if I lose a couple fish here and there, I won't be too surprised. I probably won't feed them tomorrow. Uh, and then the next day I'll feed very lightly. But as these tanks are filling, I'm obviously treating my dechlorinator. The temperature's matched up. Uh, but now while these are filling, um, go ahead and start measuring the air line. So I'm going to measure down all the way to where the sponge is going to be. And then I'm going to go ahead one over to the next tank, whatever it might be. Take your measurements. Make sure they're pretty accurately. Don't do way too much. And, and try to do them in order. So this is just talking as if you're setting up a fish room. Um, you don't wanna have one air tube come here and then the next one over go there, then the next one go here. Obviously keep them in order, try to go left to right. So when you're trying to backtrack and find where air line goes to which, if you have to adjust the air more or less, uh, it's a lot easier to do so. You also can take some uh, painter's tape do a little loop around the airline and, and mark it. Say left 10 gallon top tank, whatever it is, whatever you want to write. If you want to number your tanks, number one, number two, uh, really easy to go. Oh, there's no air here and this is blasting um, on this sponge filter. Backtrack up, find what tank it is, and then just adjust the air. So I'm going to start measuring that stuff, cutting it out. So whenever these tanks are full, I can go ahead, turn on the air pump and we'll be back and running. I'm going to start cutting that airline to match all my tanks because all these sponge filters are going to need connected tonight uh, so the tanks can be filtered and I don't lose any beneficial bacteria in those filters. Um, but now I'm filling this tank. I'm going to add some more dechlorinator uh, one or two more times, move the hose over, start cutting. Uh, but I'm going to show you guys the final results. And I still have to move this 20 gallon tank. That's probably going to be for another night. And I got to do a water change on the wall tank. Um, but so far, if you guys can just take a quick slow look over. Um, I have all the tanks on one wall and that is my favorite thing. It's really nice to look at, really nice to 
walk around and just kind of have, I just like the convenience and I like the look of it. Um, so I'll be happy once all these tanks are filled up and done. But uh, hope you guys are enjoying this video. I know it's kind of jumping around because um, when I'm filling tanks and trying to record at the same time, I just kind of get scrambled all over the place. But uh, so far, so good. I'm gonna add some dechlorinator and I'm gonna show you guys the finished results. So we're still filling up tanks, but uh, I'm setting up the airline tubes. I thought I'd just call, check in and uh, say this. Um, kind of common sense, but if it didn't really hit me till before, or uh, till right now, I didn't think about this before when I first set stuff up. Um, but I'm just setting things up left to right, going uh, left side of the top tank, then the right side, and then next one over left, right. Uh, if there's anything in between, like little breeder boxes, I'm adding that. So whenever I go back, it's easy to figure out. Um, but especially when you buy a spool, this is 500 feet. I'm never going to use all of that, uh, at least setting this up. Um, I'm trying to measure exactly the right distance to have an airline tube. Just give yourself an extra few feet every single time. I mean, that's common sense, but sometimes it doesn't hit you till later. When you're buying air tube in bulk and it's going to last you a very long time, Give yourself an extra three feet instead of measuring everything perfectly. Measure what you think it is, just kind of uh, eyeballing it. I usually hold it to the roof, hang it to the ground, and I'll kind of uh, pinch that spot. Go another two feet, and then you can set them up, pull them down. Right now, I'm about to hook this up to that sponge filter right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it about right at the bottom of the tank, so I have a little bit of slack. Um, but I have an extra like two or three feet there. If you're buying it in bulk, go ahead and just measure it way long and then it's way easier to figure out later. You're not gonna have that one air tube, uh, which I had in my old fish room, and I had plenty of extra tube just to redo it, but once it's done, it's done. You don't usually go back and fix it. I had one that was just a little bit too short. It's in the left corner. I couldn't slide it over or it would unplug. I had to keep it in that corner, and I was just pure laziness to remeasure and kind of figure it out and kind of wire it through the wall because of the huge pain. But if I would've just done this technique, it would've saved me a lot of time, and it would've been perfect, so. Plug it in where you want it to be, um, kind of eyeball measure it a little bit long, pull it down behind the tanks, don't let them tangle or intertwine so they're all left to right, they're not touching, and then pull it down with some slack, cut it off and plug it in. Um, I don't know why I felt that was necessary to say, but I never did that before, and I think it's gonna be very helpful uh, setting up the tank second time around. All right guys, I'm all done. Uh, I have all the airlines for the most part set up. I have all the tanks filled, all the fish are doing good so far. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead, plug in the air pump, let's see how it all works. All right, here we go guys, moment of truth. Hopefully everything is working. Um, I'm sure it's gonna be more air and I can kind of dial it back, but uh, here we go. Okay, I have a bunch of valves that are completely open. I'm gonna go ahead and close those, and uh, hopefully we start getting uh, jolts of air here. There we go. All right, now we're okay. So everything that was completely open up top uh, was just letting all the pressure go. So now I've restricted all of those to nothing. Uh, the ones I have some air, t I have some air tubes here, just kind of sitting on top of the tanks like in here. Just want a little bit of bubbles going, but nothing splashing. And um, I have plenty of air going. Like, there's way too much down there. Uh, so I'm gonna mess around with this for a minute, but um, it is 1.45, guys. Uh, long day, I'm not even sure how this video's gonna turn out or what I'm gonna call it, but I just wanna share you guys the process of um, setting up the tanks, moving everything, getting it started, kind of starting a fish room. Um, 2.0 for me, obviously I have some experience in fish room stuff, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna dial back some of the air, cut off the lights, call it a night. Um, thank you all for watching. If you made it to the end, comment below, let me know that you made it. Uh, look for the future videos because they're gonna be more organized and more productive, but uh, I got a lot done today. Hopefully it was an okay video. I'm gonna go back and do some editing, but uh, thanks for watching guys. Check out some of my old videos. I'm gonna post them right here. Uh, go ahead and like the video if you liked it, and uh, go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. We hit 4,000 subscribers not too long ago. Thank you, um, everyone who subscribed. Uh, looking forward to growing the channel, growing the fish room, doing a lot of cool things, but uh, 
Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.